we're going to kick off our session. So today we're talking about uh, tips for agencies and freelancers to succeed. And my name is Will Erickson. I'm the managing director. I'm also a software developer at MomentumGroup.tech. Um, so we're recording the call. Um, yeah, if possible, it would be awesome to um, keep cameras on. And it's a smaller group today, so that's totally fine. Um, if you have any questions, just um, raise your hand or put it in the chat and we'll just have a discussion, I guess, at the end of the call. Um, we've already done some introductions, but um, what we might do is just jump straight into our content for today and then um, we can yeah we can have more chat at the end. So the first thing I want to talk about is just mindset as a general concept. And the reality is whether you're a freelancer or you're running an agency, you're running a business and you can be great at what you do. You can be great at your trade craft and you can be terrible at running a business. And so I think the first thing that we need to shift in is just thinking in our mind and learning to um, develop ourselves and develop the art of running a business as much as developing what we do as our craft or our trade. Uh, and I've learned this over the years that, that mindset makes a really big difference. So taking opportunities to invest in ourselves um, and reading and listening to podcasts and just getting all the different input we can to grow will really have a, a massive impact. Um, some of my favorite podcasts are things like How I Built This, um and anything really around founders there's a practical founders podcast i've picked up um there's a bunch of other things that, that are out there as well but just pick something that you you like and you identify with and you can uh, learn from and um, get out there and and learn and grow and it's amazing how um how different businesses have lessons that translate into this even if they're they're in quite different industries we're also part of some business coaching networks. So we actually pay to be part of a coaching network where we get input and um, that helps us to think and to learn and to get a, a perspective on what we're doing and not just be at the grind every day, but actually um, develop our, our, our mindset and our, our skills and uh, particularly our skills as a business owner. The next thing that I was thinking about is to really identify your niche. You can't be everything to everyone all the time. At the beginning, it can start out a bit like this where we're just running and we're, we're trying to accept anything that comes across our, our path. Uh, but over time, it's really good to find our focus. <clears throat> and in particular, I have to identify niches that have problems that we can solve and also <laughs> niches that have the ability to pay us. <laughs> so. There are lots of people who have lots of problems, but they're not necessarily good clients because they don't have the desire or the ability to pay for those problems to be solved. But um, it is true that in, in technology, there are lots of problems to solve. And there's also problems that can save people a lot of money um, and can really help them or they, they might be growing and scaling their business. So I think just focusing on niches that achieve that is very important. Um, and some examples that we've we've identified, um, and these would be true for our business, is that we would build internal tools for growing businesses with with one to five million dollars of revenue. Um, we build apps for funded startups, uh, or I help businesses to optimize their internal processes with no code tools. One way you can do this is actually create a menu of your ideal projects. So, what are the sort of things that you're looking for? Um, what are the things you've already worked on? When you work on something that is um, close to what you'd like to work on, then have that as an example as a reference project that you can take and talk to new clients about um, and show them part of your process and how you can, you can help them to succeed. The next thing is building your brand. So who are you and what do you stand for? Um, this will emerge over time. It's also possibly something that is not obvious, but we can um, we can think about and we can consider and then we can identify and build upon. Um, so some of the brands that we've really worked on 
um, would really be momentum as a company. So we build high quality, scalable tech products using no code tools. That was the first um, line that I came up with to describe what we were trying to do. Um, and it speaks to wanting to do things well, wanting to think and plan and implement um, these products in a way that it's both high quality in the, the design, the way that people experience the app, but it's also high quality in that it can scale and it can take business forward and stay with them for some time. Um, so it's just capturing those, those key points that I think um, are really important and, and they describe how we approach our work versus an, another agency or another developer that might be out there in the market. Uh, another brand, Will Erickson is a bubble expert, having led bubble boot camps, bubbles a nice program and building many apps for clients as an agency leader. Uh, this one's funny because it's it's me, um, but it's actually this concept of personal brand. And I think it's very powerful because people relate to a person. They, they can see a person and understand a person maybe more easily than, a, than an entity. Um, and building up a personal brand is a very, very powerful tool, um, particularly if you've got some opportunities to do um, things that would position you as a leader in your field. Um, and that certainly worked really well for me. Um, the first thing we did for our marketing was we actually built a single, like a landing page app with my name as the domain, so willerickson.com. And that had a lot of traction um, in our first 12 months of operating. Then another one is Momentum Academy is the quickest way to become a professional bubble developer, teaching you how to use bubble and also best practice development, UX, UI and product management techniques. Um, now we started teaching bubble and um, developing our own training material as our gap in the market um, to develop and deliver really high quality instructor led programs. Um, and this, this brand, it actually has some synergy with our main momentum brand because we are trying to build high quality products for clients, but then we're also teaching people how to do that. So I think there's a synergistic effect there um, and it enforces taking that best practice approach, not just jumping into a tool and building something, but actually thinking about the design, thinking about the product management, thinking about the development, the architecture underline, underlying the product. So those are some examples, um, but I guess the question is what, what words do people associate with you? How do you want people to think about you? And so for me, it's things like being relatable, being intelligent, having focus on education and helping people to understand and to make good decisions, um, solving problems, having some creativity, um, having some analytical skills, being able to put that together and come up with a solution for them. So those are the kinds of things that we have um, landed on, but that will be unique for you and for what you're uh, wanting to do in your business and, and this, the experience and background that you bring. The next thing is about finding channels for obtaining leads. So there's a few things that we've done that, that we've found have, have worked really well. Um, building a strong website, to start with is great. As I mentioned, the first website was my personal website. And then um, we went on to develop the Momentum website and that became, um, that we did a first iteration, one of our first designers, and then we actually built upon that and we enhanced that with a, a new approach and a slightly different aesthetic um, and building in some new features like the live events, like the Academy, um, and some services that we offer as well. Um, but I think because we're, we are in the industry of a digital agency, we need to present ourselves really well um, on the web. Uh, I get really a bit um, skeptical of, of agencies that present pages that aren't mobile optimized um, or they have clear design uh, flaws or problems that they haven't picked up on and identified. Because if they can't get it right on their own landing page or their own website, then I'm not sure they're going to be able to get it right for a client. Um, online freelancer platforms. This is the one I've had the least experience with, but I have actually heard some really good things uh, about being on these, these marketplace platforms. And so 
um, as a freelancer or an agency, people are looking for um, for work and they're going to these platforms. And so having a presence there is definitely a good uh, a good thing. And I have heard of some custom dev agencies, uh, which would be like Momentum, uh, actually using these platforms and sourcing a whole lot of great clients, even though you wouldn't think necessarily that they would be there. Um, you can find really good clients, especially if you can differentiate yourself on these platforms. Uh, social media interest groups, um, forums, that sort of thing can be a great place to engage organically with the potential um, clients as well. Um, I do think this can get a bit flooded, but uh, it certainly can be a good place to be out there and um, being a part of. Networking groups like startup accelerators, um, can be really great. So finding clients in, um, in places like that. Now, again, it's probably a place where you want to engage organically and just build up relationships and build your personal network. Um, but you get access to a whole lot of ideas and a whole lot of people who are looking for uh, ways to, to make things happen. So um, definitely good to be part of that. Uh, we were part of Founder Institute um, and made some really great connections there with people who have gone on to do work for a long term. Um, small, medium business or medium enterprise networks, so SMB, SME. Again, this is a really good place because here's people out there doing things with uh, real businesses, with real revenue. Um, and just being in those places and being someone who can help and who can um, be a trusted voice can be really powerful. Um, I was actually, I went to a, a BNI, um, BNI Business Networking International meeting a few weeks ago and uh, I haven't yet joined but I do think that's a really great network where you intentionally go and share leads with people so things like that um, can be quite powerful. All of that's really building out your personal network I mean we have we have people in our lives already and if we know people that um, are doing things in this space then they can be some of our best sort of early clients to get um, some, some track record and uh, people that will already trust us rather than having to build that trust from scratch. Um, the other thing I've found has worked really well is just content creation, um, particular blogging, but also videos have been a really great source of leads um, because I think these methods allow you to show yourself and show the value you bring and people can see, okay, this person has a good understanding of the thing. I feel like I could work with them or trust them to bring my solution to life. So I, I would really um, strongly suggest content creation as a way of meeting really good quality um, clients. Um, then the next thing is just developing your pricing model and structure. Um, and this, this is the old um, challenge, the old chestnut <laughs> for agencies or freelancers um, is how to, how to get pricing right. There's always situations where we underprice and we regret it. Um, there's these situations where we overprice and we miss out on work. So getting that balance right is a challenge. Um, we, we do need to have a way of estimating work and learning to do that uh, relatively quickly, being competitive in that pricing model. Um, I think the thing is with, with whether you're a freelancer or an agency, if you're offering value, then um, you can charge a good rate but you're still competitive and you're still helping that client get what they need. One thing we try and do is pre-qualify our clients. So we do try and understand their budget and their business model and see, okay, is this someone that actually um, understands that building a digital product takes time and resource? And are they realistic about that? Do they have funds to invest or access to those funds? Uh, or are they already running a revenue generating business and they've got a lot of pain points that they need help with versus are they just a person with a lot of ideas but no capacity to actually execute them? Um, so just come up with a few questions about that where you can gently probe and just ask people about their uh, their plans, their, their roadmap, how they'd like to um, actually budget for their project and fund it. And um, that's really important. I mean, if people are cagey about their budget, it usually means that they just don't really know and they're not that, that experienced because I think once people have had some experience with building products, they actually realise, okay, well, you know, this is going to cost me something. It's going to have a timeline associated. 
uh, I'm going to have to go through the process. Whereas I guess when people are just testing the market and, and trying to um, I'm trying to learn, they've never done this before. They're going around and I'm just asking sort of, oh, can you meet with me and talk to me? But I don't really know um, what the budget is. And um, you know, the reality is, I mean, there will be some people that take advantage of people and want to charge them a lot for their, their work and overcharge. But um, in general, I think the good operators are just working off a of time um, basis calculation and estimating work in a, in a reasonable and a fair way. And so having, um, yeah, basically just when people are really cagey about budget, they don't want to talk about it. Um, they're, they're just shopping the market and looking around and they're probably a pre-qualify out. Um, whereas when people are realistic, they look, I've got a, I've got a $30,000 budget. I know this is going to take four months. Um, you understand that they've actually thought about the process and that they they are the kind of person that you could work with um the next thing is just back yourself and have a go so sometimes you just have to go and, and try you, you don't know you've just got to learn by trial and error um you can't just sit on the sidelines and watch the whole time so so jump in um but over time you'll develop this criteria for knowing who is my client um like an example for me right now would be someone with a budget of say 10 to 30 K or, or more, um, say a timeline of two to three months. Anyone who says I wanted it, I want it in two weeks. I'm usually quite skeptical of, um, I, I generally prefer people that say, look, this is the start of, of a bigger project. So we've got other work that we want to do. We've got more features, but we're just going to bite off phase one for now. Um, and so, it's it's more like there's an ongoing relationship there um also the the client has some experience in the world of digital product um and they explain that they, they don't want cheap but they want to do quality work and they want to build that ongoing relationship um anyone that's just looking shopping on price i really avoid um so you know people that understand that I mean, the reality is that people that come in and they want to spend less than that budget, they end up spending this budget anyway, or they end up abandoning the project, not getting what they want, because it's very unlikely that they're going to be able to build anything um, for less than that, that will actually have real users that will actually get deployed, will actually get supported. Uh, if they're going shopping and they're spending less than that, well, they might get themselves a nice, um, cheap MVP, but they're going to be really embarrassed and they're going to want to come and fix it up and, and make it something their customers will trust um, and not just abandon because of the low quality of the product. So I just don't think that there's any way around spending that if you want to use an agency. Um, if you want to use a freelancer, then there's you could spend a bit less, but you take on a lot of that management responsibility. Um, and then numbers, just just as a as a business, we need to know our numbers and how they work. Um, and so as a freelancer, I think when you're pricing yourself, I mean, if we're talking in terms of hourly rate, you do need to charge a higher rate than what you would earn in a job. Um, you need to try and, I would say, be charging at least one and a half to two times, possibly more, um, because you're factoring in the uncertainty of not knowing. Um, but you're also choosing a rate that reflects the value that you bring. So it is quite true that some freelancers could charge $100 an hour, but they could get the same amount of work done as a, as a freelancer that charges $10 an hour um, or $20 an hour. In, so the, the $100 an hour one for one hour could achieve what someone charging $20 an hour achieves in eight hours. Um, and in development world, especially on, um, well, even on small projects, but on bigger projects, the value of those high level skills is actually a multiplier. And, um, and so you can pick a rate that's quite high uh, if you have a high level of skill and you're solving a lot of problems for the client. Um, but as a baseline, you need to be charging more than you would just be earning every hour of the week in a job. And um, you should also be, be trying to go for a higher rate, but also not sort of losing work. So if, you, if you're just shooting for the moon and then um, you're not getting anything, then you're probably way too high. Um, if you're if you're constantly booked out and um, and there's 
you know, people just want, want more and more, then you should probably try and raise your rate slightly. Um, but yeah, you just need to be realistic about the level of skill you bring. I mean, when I'm looking at freelancers, what I, what I want is, um, someone who's quite autonomous, someone who can bring a lot of, um, value and solve problems. And so if I'm, if I'm paying someone a low rate, but I'm paying them a lot more hours to get the same output, um, then a, they're slower, B, they need a lot more corrections. So, so I know I'm actually going to have timelines slipping on projects. And, um, and so it, it would be better for me to pay someone a higher rate that has a higher level of skill and can exercise a lot more autonomy in the way that they, that they do their role. As an agency, um, this is where we also need to know our numbers. Uh, we should really be aiming for a multiple of our cost base and uh, we've tried different things, but um, I've spoken to mentors who say things like two to four times your cost base. So if you charge uh, $50 an hour, if you pay $50 an hour to that person doing the work, you should be charging um, $100 to $200 an hour. Now, getting up to that 4x multiple is is pretty challenging. So I think that that is a uh, uh, shoot for the moon sort of thing again but we can do that through internal efficiency and through systemization and templatization and reusability and that that is i think the challenge for, for any agency owner in any any field not just development but um is to try and figure out how can we how can we increase our margin um by having a lot of the work done and standardized and systemized uh, from very early on and and being able to um, turn out high quality work quickly. So those things will help us to scale as well, uh, will help us to, um, yeah, to be systematic and to, to not sort of drop the ball on projects. Um, I do have a slide on economic conditions, which I haven't finished, but the, um, the general idea here was that there is a challenging economic climate right now, and there is a lot of doom and gloom. Um, technology is a great place to be. However, there is certainly a, um, uh, we've felt a bit of a slowdown in terms of uh, inquiry and ability to pick up work in the last few months. And I do think that that's a general um, feeling of uncertainty. Now, I don't think that that is problematic, but I think where, where we need to be as agencies or freelancers is, is staying one step ahead. So being an early adopter, looking for opportunities to try new tools, to try new approaches to solving problems, um, looking for niches that are maybe less affected by this, looking for ways we can um, can keep our, our business operating and growing in a way that, um, yeah, is less affected. So I don't think it's time to not run an agency or not be a freelancer, but I think it's time to really know um, know your business well and to start to focus and to yeah look at the things that are working look at things that aren't working and focus on the things that are and replicate those and um and maybe you know not not invest in things that may may be questionable use of resources so in terms of next steps um at momentum we're running these live events weekly we have different topics but a lot of them are around um, being successful with Bubble and as an agency. Um, we're also running our academy program. So we have a, an eight-week course. Um, it's four hours a week and we're training developers um, or we're training anyone to become a professional Bubble developer and not just how to use the tool, but how to do the product management, the, the UX, UX, UI um, and development work. We're not teaching them to be a product manager or a UX designer, but just how to have enough of those things to be able to do really high quality work um, repeatedly. Um, and we've got a few different cohorts that we're going to start um, with the Academy coming up in the next um, month or two. We also have some services and mentoring on our website, so definitely check that out. Um, there's a few of the clients we've worked with here um, and some of the successes that they've had. Um, so we've, we've definitely been fortunate to work with some great people. And um, yeah, some of our clients have definitely come from that model of 
uh, either um, funded startups or businesses with significant revenue that they've built um, or they've built on the product. So um, that's definitely where we've positioned ourselves and we've found um, the ability to grow has been supporting um, some really great people and their businesses. So thanks for listening. Please reach out, um, check out our website if there's anything that um, we can help you with. And yeah, we'd love to, to be in touch.